Now, while Lord Charles Cornwallis had lost a quarter of his men at the Battle of Cowpens on January 17th of 1780, he remained resolute to pursue and destroy the army of Continental Army Commander Nathaniel Greene. Cornwallis became so focused on running the rebels down that he burned his supply wagons to lighten his troops up. And while pursuing Greene, the British scrounged for supplies and tried to supplement their troops with Tory militia that they found along the way. By March 6th, with his supply line stretched to the point of breaking and his men beginning to desert, Cornwallis realized that he needed to attack Greene soon. So on March 15th of 1781, Cornwallis's 2,100 men caught up with Greene's forces of 4,500 at Guilford Courthouse, North Carolina. The terrain there was a mixture of woods and open spaces, something Greene and his riflemen could use to their advantage. Now adopting a tactic utilized by Daniel Morgan at the Battle of Cowpens, Green formed his men into three lines. The first line was held by North Carolina militia along the edges of the woodland, and in the second line back in the woods, Green positioned militia from Virginia. In the open space behind the woods, Continental regulars composed Green's third and most formidable line. Now this concept, known as defense in depth, was for the first two lines to exhaust the enemy's advance and inflict as many casualties as possible before they fell back. Green then hoped that the British would exhaust themselves when they finally encountered the third line, at which point he could deliver a decisive blow against them. Now Cornwallis arrived at the battlefield with his troops in column formation, and Green fired on them with his two small artillery pieces. Cornwallis then responded by spreading his exhausted army into a long line that began to grimly move forward. As this line advanced, bayonets set for charge, the rebels retreated back into the woods. The battle then shifted into a number of firefights within the forest, and Cornwallis, despite having his horse shot out from under him, led the British in clearing the woods. Now with this task accomplished, the British finally faced the Continentals in Green's third line. Seeing Green in front of him, Cornwallis ordered his troops to charge forward, and the battle lines closed, and the battle degenerated into a fierce hand-to-hand -hand fight. Now, while Green had underestimated the grit of the Redcoats, Cornwallis also had cause for concern when he became aware that his artillery was under threat of being taken by the Colonials. The British commander was forced to order his artillery crews to fire grape shot into the mass of American troops that were intermingled with his own men. Now, as cannons don't discriminate as to who they're firing at, the result was dozens of casualties on both sides. Ultimately, the sniff of grape shot had the effect of breaking up the scrum, and Green wisely realized that discretion was the better part of valor and left the field in good order. Cornwallis had won the day. Only he really hadn't. Green lost about 500 of his men, with about 1,000 of his rebel militia leaving soon after the battle to return to their farms. And the loss at Guilford Courthouse was not a major bother for Green, whose focus was not on winning battles, but on exhausting the British to win the war. Cornwallis, on the other hand, had paid a pretty heavy toll to win the day. Around 500 of his men, which were about a quarter of his forces, were either wounded or killed. And this was 500 men that he was unable to afford to keep a viable army in the field. Further, when news of his Pyrrhic victory reached London, calls to end the war in the colonies intensified. So for Cornwallis, Guilford Courthouse led to the realization that the southern colonies were pretty much lost. His hope for a loyalist militia was never going to materialize, and he would have to set his sights somewhere else to win the war. Of course, his response was another unrealistic scheme. This time, he figured he would move his battered army north into Virginia, figuring that this was the key to holding the south. Further, he converted his army yet again by raiding the surroundings for horses and changing his troops into mounted infantry. Unfortunately, he was still critically short of manpower, so he freed 12,000 slaves and added them to his roster. With his new army, Cornwallis turned in the direction of Yorktown, Virginia. Now we've got Guilford Courthouse set up with uh, Cornwallis against uh, Green. And we can see over here on the uh, right, the Americans are entrenched with a pretty strong position. Uh, I don't know. It'll be interesting. I guess the nice thing the British have is they have some pretty pretty strong units. So they need to bring those into the... In, they need to probably take these militia out as quickly as possible. But they've got three rows they've got to break their way through. Okay, Brits get to go first. And uh, they get... Uh, they're going to have five, five action points. So... Let's go ahead and get him started. One, two, three, 
four, five. Easy enough to move. Uh, flip. Get our turn marker. The Americans will get to go with their one, two, three. So that gives them four action points. And they're going to try to slow down the Brits. So one, two, three, four. Let's start with the cannon. And uh, firing Cornwallis. They need a six. They get a two, a five, and a four. So they miss Cornwallis. Stevens will go. Let's see. Actually, they can't because there's two away. This guy can go. And he's going to fire. He needs a six. Misses. Okay. We'll bring this... Uh, this guy up and this guy up and we got one left what are we gonna do hmm i'm gonna bring this cannon up okay that's it we flip we go to turn two the brits go with a five okay we could fire or we could move forward. I think it behooves us to move forward. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. Okay. We flip, we move it forward to the American phase. Americans have four, and we're going to fire with our cannon again. Now, fives and sixes are going to do damage, and we get a five, so that's enough to hit and take some damage. Get taken, okay. Then, um, This guy behind his entrenchment is going to go, and he needs a uh, five or six. Gets two hits. Hit taken. Hit taken. Mark moved. Okay, this guy will go. And... Uh, Rolls three, six, five. oh my. Hit taken, hit taken, hit taken. And then finally, this guy will go. Two, one, and four. Nothing. Okay. We flip marker. We go to turn three. The Brits get to go now. Hopefully they'll... They got two... So they have six. Now, so now's the time to try to... Just work our way down the line. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, this guy's going to rush. So we'll start with a rush. And he rushes it. He doesn't have much to lose here. With a two, this guy holds his line. And it's across a, it's across a uh, fence here. So the fence is going to give a defense. A defense, you get it? Ha ha. So they need a fives or sixes. Gets two sixes, that's enough. And he will move in here. Okay, this guy's gonna go, he's just gonna fire. And he gets a six, so that's enough to take a hit. Cornwallis's guy is gonna go against the cannon and fire it needs five or sixes right no uh five six or six okay sixes will work okay nothing okay this guy's gonna go and he needs a um fives or sixes gets a six no he needs um just a six sixes are only it's gonna work so because this guy's behind a fence 
weren't moved. So that was one, two, three, four, five. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. We got one left. And he gets a five and a six, which is, is okay. That does a hit and a hit. So he... Okay, green. We flip our marker. We go to the American phase of turn three. Roll for action points. And they have four. Okay, I want to really try to hit Cornwallis here. We'll start with our cannon. And um, roll three dice. A four, a one, and a five. Okay, four, five, six. So this is five. So five's going to hit and do some damage. Cornwallis is a, at a one. So we had a one on Cornwallis. So he's hit and he escapes dying. So Mark moved. And um, this guy's going to go after him. So he's got two. One, three, and two doesn't do anything. Okay. This guy's going to do the same thing. Two, four, and six. Well, that's enough to send... That six is enough to send him to the victory point pile. And he's going to move there. Go one more here. This guy will fire. And uh, let's see. He needs a six or a one. Sixes or ones will be good. Gets a six, okay. Hit taken. Doesn't do anything to Cornwallis. And then a final one. This guy's fighting behind the fence. He'll go. Gets a three. Gets two sixes, okay. Hit taken. Hit taken. That's two hits. We uh, flip our American marker. Go to turn four. And British APs are going to be put us at six. line kind of broke up a little bit, but Cornwallis is going to move forward. Cannon is going to move forward. Uh, this guy is going to move forward. Two E here will attack. Needs us. He's going to rush. He's going to rush. No, he's going to just attack. He's just getting an attack in, rolls a three, gets a five through two. He needed a six. So he's not able to do it. If he wouldn't mind a fence, he would have been able to. And then this guy down here is going to go. And he does three, and he gets a six. So that's enough to send this guy over, and he's going to pop behind. Final one, um, Tarleton, who's still hanging around. I'll leave him be. Do we have another officer here? Oh, okay, he's got Dragoons, that's right. Okay, we go to the next uh, phase. It's the American phase, and they get uh, three APs. Okay, we're gonna just do some attacking. This guy attacks with three Gets a 2-2 two, two, and 2, does nothing. This cannon's going to attack. 5, 6, and 2. Okay, that's enough to send this guy over here. Not enough to do that. And then Stevens is going to jump over the walls and uh, take this. And finally, this guy is going to try... He gets a 1-2 or 1, does nothing. Okay. So... Cornwallis was uh, killed at the Battle of Galford Courthouse. Okay, we can flip our marker. British phase. And they get a plus one. Okay. So that's pretty much even. Let's start with this guy here. Um, attacks, and he's going, moving around the side, so... Needs a five or six. That's enough. Okay. This guy's going to fire down at Stevens. 
So he needs a six. He gets a six. Hit taken. Uh, the cannon's going to fire and needs a uh, five or six. Gets a... Uh, is an, that's enough to um, take him out. Stevens had a one, so let's see if Stevens makes it. He does. Okay, Stevens saves. And then a final... This guy is going to fire down here. And he gets a six, so he takes a hit. And that is it for that turn. It's getting close. The British just need to take out one other... American unit. Okay, we flip the marker. The Americans go. They get three additional AP, so that might help them quite a bit. Stevens will move... Actually, we'll move this guy forward. That's our one. This guy can attack with a three misses. Okay. We gotta get in range here. One... Two, actually, no, hold on. One, two, three. Hold it. One, one, two. Okay, there we go. And that is the end of turn. Okay. British phase. Get rid of those moves. AP plus three. Oh, gosh. This'll, this'll be good. This is our first uh, three of the of the game for the Brits. Okay, mostly moving. Um, start with a rush. Okay, this guy's gonna rush down here, one, and if they get a one, okay, oh, they do, they don't go back, and then we roll three, and there it is. Okay, that's game, because he takes those guys out. So pretty much the first row was of uh, American units was taken out in this one. And again, I played it with my house rules. The fence lines would uh, not block the lines of sight from the guy shooting out, but they did provide some defensive value. Anyway, that was fast. Um, that was a pretty quick Guilford Courthouse. I guess the Brits won it, so we got Green still back there. He was probably the greatest general that never won a battle, but kind of an interesting guy. And that, I think, is it for the Southern Theater of Operations for... Uh, for hold the line. We'll go ahead and do tricord. We'll do, tri I'm sorry, tricorn, and then we'll wrap it up. Now we're moving on to tricorn. And again, the Battle of Guilford Courthouse. Uh, oh, we're looking at some of the, the uh, starting conditions for the game. Uh, both sides will start with five command cards and three combat cards, with the British moving first. Special rules are there's an opening cannonade allowed, and the militia will get a chance to fire in that. So they'll basically act as artillery in the cannonade, and then they'll be able to move backwards if you want them to move back. If the the uh, There's also these hill hexes up here, and those are victory hexes. If uh, the Continentals can hold it every turn, then they get uh, three points. Now, if the British take it, then they get a point for each one they hold of these two hexes. So the game ought to be pretty fast. It it definitely encourages the British to move fast towards those hills. So I'm not sure the British can even make it that far that fast. But oh well, we'll just we'll see how it goes. Uh, I've got my little uh, cheat sheet here. I find that I have to use these in most of the Command and Colors games. Um, the only one I think of is Battle Cry, which is so simple on units that it's not a big issue. But, oh, there's the cap. Okay. So let's get started. I think the British will fire at this cannon here as part of their cannonade. So they're going to roll uh, 2, 2, 1. So 1 plus 1 for being full strength. So 2 dice. And they get an infantry and a flag. Now, the uh, having these two militia next to him will neutralize that one flag so he doesn't go backwards. Okay, now we're going to say he's going to do the same thing. Gets a sabers and an infantry. Now the sabers will count, so that's take a hit for the British. And then we can move down the line with the militia. And I think I'm just going to fire... Well, I want to fire at these... Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and try to fire at these ones that have the uh, leader units. 
never hurts. So the retreat, I think, was two, two. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll roll a militia are going to be one die, so two die here. And a flag and a flag. Okay, he's neutralized the flag because he's got buddies by him, and then he's got a leader, so that neutralizes that flag, and then this guy will step back. Okay, this guy will do the same thing. Artillery and sabers, neither of those do anything. This guy will fire here at O'Hara. Cavalry and flag, neither of those are going to do anything. And then, oh, where's he going to go? He doesn't have any room to go backwards. Okay, and then this guy will do the same thing. Flag and artillery, nothing there. So... Basically, the bombardment didn't do anything, or the cannonade, so... Okay, now the British get to go first. And what do we got? Now, I'd like to get my line. I've got a pretty good line here. All units in one section may move one hex. Well, that's kind of nice. Um, advancing my center does the same thing. Almost. I think we're going to move these guys. So we're going to dress the ranks. And uh, let's go ahead and give him a card. All units and lone leaders in one section can move one hex. They can't battle. Units that do not move can engage in range combat. Oh, and I get a combat card. Okay, forgot that guy. Here's your combat card. Okay, so basically everybody here moves a hex. Okay, that's it for the, uh, I wanted to say the Union turn, the uh, British turn. I've been playing too many war games lately. <laughs> okay, bayonet attack. That one's kind of nice. I'm going to pop this up just a little bit here. So I can read these. Sorry about that. If you're at home, it's probably too blurry to see. Training. In order unit battle dice when not reduced when it moves. Okay, I like that. That's kind of helpful. The infantry range bonus is kind of nice. They get two additional dice, but these guys are too far off. Okay. Um, not much there. These guys... I think I'm going to try to move the right and the left flanks inwards. So let's do that. Let's get rid of that. Assault. Do I want to use... I don't think I want to use any cards yet. I basically want to try to move everybody into position here. So we're going to do that for Assault Right. That's these guys. Uh, for each command card you have, including this one, issue one order to leaders. So I can move five. One, two, three, four... Five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm going to move all these guys. Um, Light can move here. He can move two. This guy's going to move here, and this guy's going to move here. And I think they will go ahead and battle. Let's see. One, two. Yeah, I can. Discard. So this one is going to attack. This one's going to attack. Oh, and this guy can move. Um, there, try to make that. We're going to change the movement a little bit here. I'm going to go here from here, and then this guy went here, and then that guy will stay. So at least what I'm trying to do is keep my line together as much as possible. Okay, now this rifle attack two. Take advantage of any attack you can. So militia can go two one one two one one. So he can fire down here. Let's start with the militia. And they get one two to hit. Artillery and an infantry. Okay, they did hit this time. And let's see if Webster makes it. Nope. Or yeah, he makes it five. Okay, then these rifles get to go. And rifles have a 2, 2, 
2, 2, 1. So he's got 2 plus 1 is 3. Flag, cavalry, and flag. Okay. We... He's got Webster with him, so that ignores a flag, and he's got two next to him, so that ignores a flag. So we can delete that. And then Washington here is going to be a light. And this is two, two, one. Okay, we got one die here, plus he's got an extra for having Washington with him, which is two, plus being full, that's three. Infantry, artillery, and cavalry. Okay, another infantry hit. Take a hit, and then let's see if uh, we're gonna see if Webster makes it again. So we need if he rolls two sabers, he's gone. Nope. And then that's it. Okay. Now we go to the um, beginning of the British turn. We really need to move up and hit those somehow. Although if we hit the center, that militia, we should be able to dissolve that militia pretty quickly. So let's see what we've got. Advance left, line command. That's what I want. Okay, this ought to be deadly. Um, I don't really need that. Rally check, infantry range bonus. That could be helpful. So I'm going to use those two. Okay, now then, what I'm going to do with... This means that I can... I can move all of these guys one hex. And I can then shoot with an infantry ranged bonus. Oh, they can't move. Okay. That's okay. I can I can move all of these guys here. Now this guy's going to attack. He's going to shoot. So we'll activate him. He can activate. He can activate. And then these guys can move one and activate. So everybody here can move. One, two, one, 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 one. I think everybody's moved. Okay. So my line moves. Now these guys get the bonus, and then everybody else can attack. So let's start with the bonus guys. Um, Webster and his rifles are going to get uh, regulars are two, two, one, two, two. Now, what is... I don't think woods do anything here. Forest move into minus one. I think that's... So there's a minus one to attack into the forest. Okay, so we've got two plus Webster gives him a three minus one, two. Okay, so we attack with two die. Oh, but he's also got an additional two, so four die. Okay, infantries. Let's take our infantries first. Take hit. Take hit. Okay, and then we've got... Ah, a sabers, which we don't use, and a flag. Okay, now he, he can ignore one flag because he's got two units beside him. So there's that. And we will delete that. We'll say battled. Okay. This guy is at two, two, one. He's going to do two. And he gets a cavalry and a flag. So the flag will count. Moves him back, and then this guy will make his saving throw. I always call that a saving throw. It's just easy to remember. It. And he's got a saving throw of five, and he gets it, so he's fine. Okay, and then we'll change this to... And then this guy, two, two, one. We will hit with a one here, but he's at full, so that's two plus O'Hara's three plus two more for that card that I used, that infantry range bonus, so five. Artillery, artillery, take the two artilleries first, take it. And that was a sibilant S there. 
Um, let's see. I need a de-esser for my thing. It's weird how when you're uh, editing these, you find out how sibilant you can be at times. Okay, and then a flag. And he can ignore the flag because he's got two guys next to him. Okay, so that means those three have gone. Now then, this guy can go. I'm going to fire down the side here. And it's going to be... He's moved, so that's at minus one. So lights, I think light is just double check myself. Light infantry is two, two, one. So two, two. Starts with two, and he gets an extra one for being full, so that's three. And then minus one for moving, so that's two. So he attacks with two dice against that cavalry, and we get a flag and an infantry. Now the flag will count, so the, this guy will move back two. He then gets five to see, and he makes his save. Okay. This regular will go. I um, think I'll go against those rifles. So we got two, two, plus one is three, minus one is two. Two dice. Infantry and cavalry. Well, that'll work. Take a hit. Okay. Uh, the guard will go. Now they're three, two, one. Let's go against that militia. And so we've got one, and then plus one, minus one. So one die. Sabers does not affect him because it's not hand-to-hand. -hand. Okay, this guy's moved, this guy's moved. This guy, now here we can go with against those rifles. Um, I think this guy, he... So the rifles, he's got, uh, let's see, next... There's two. So two plus one is three for those guys. Saber, flag, and flag. Do sabers count? No hits on sabers in melee, right? Yeah. Um, sabers, flag, and flag. So two flags hit. Now he's got a leader next to him, and he's got a, this, these two, the fence and this guy. So he's okay. He misses those flags. And then the Highlanders go, and Highlanders have three, two. We'll go with two here. Um, plus one is three. Minus one for moving is two. Flag and infantry. Well, that did hit. Take a hit. And then here we've got these guys, and they're going to be at two. Uh, minus one. Plus they're full, so that's three. Minus one is two. Cavalry and a flag. Okay, and he can nullify. The flag's nullified. And that is the end of the British move. That did not go as well as I thought it would. I thought they'd knock that line back, but... Okay. Discard. Discard. And now the Continentals can go. First of all, the Continentals get a uh, marker. flip and oh do they get two or three i forgot whether they get two or three um three ouch okay one two and three and then we're gonna see what our cards look like i get another card here um well we do think I do think we will use the infantry range bonus. Oh, I should have. That would be a uh, assault left and the right. What am I going to do here? Um, That would have been a nice one to play. We should have played that one. And I say, I, you know, I'll hold off on that. I, let's see. I did him wrong. Okay, I'm going to do a scout, and I'm going to do an infantry range bonus, and I do get a... Draw two combat cards. Yeah, we want that. Okay. Um...
I'm terrible at this game, so just so you know. Let's see. Line command. That's what we're going to use next turn. So we'll do the scout. Um, issue one order to one unit in any section. Oh, I got to get rid of a card, a command card. Sorry about that. Let's get rid of that. Um, we'll discard. Um, I'm going to get rid of that. I don't think that's going to be. There you go. Now then, scout. So uh, each section can do something. Okay, we will fight here. We'll activate this guy. We'll activate the two, two. I think we'll use this militia. And and actually this guy could battle back. I'm going to do that. Last turn he should have been able to battle back. So we'll just do that. He's got three Sabres, infantry, artillery. And I don't know if rifles get sabers. Let's see if they do or not. I guess they do. So, yep. Yeah, take a hit. And we will do it again. Let's do it again. Actually, no. We're going to move this guy into position with those rifles. That's what we'll do on that section. Okay. Now then, we are going to use an... Oh, he can't do range combat. Oh, well. Okay. Range combat here. Range combat here. So, discard that. And then Washington over here. That's not George. Um, two, two. And then I get an extra one, two for being those guys. So three, four. And then an extra two for using the card. So six, six dice. Wow. Okay. So two sabers doesn't count an infantry. So of all those six dice, I had one hit. Take a hit. Okay. Here we've got two, two, one. I'm going to go ahead and fire on that cannon again. So I get one plus one for being at full strength. So that's two plus two more for the card. So four die. Flag, flag, sabers, infantry. Okay, one flag nullified for having buddies, and one flag nullified for having O'Hara here. So two flags nullified, so nothing there. Okay, that is it for that turn. Now then the uh, British can go. Um, let's see, Inspired Advanced left, I don't know, I need those Highlanders would help. Advanced Center, okay, the Center Advance, that's what we want to do. Three units in the Center, and also we'll use Leader Initiative to help out a little bit. So I'm going to start with these three units, uh, move forward, two, and one, two, and I think I'm going to go ahead and charge uh, Lee over here. And then this guy will go with the, the leader initiative. And he will fight, so. Okay, let's start with this guard here. And the guard gets a two, but he's moved, so that's a one. He's at full strength, however. So that's a two. And we will hit that, try to hit that militia. Flag and artillery. Okay, the flag doesn't count. This guy here, O'Hara, against the cannon. And it's going to be two plus one is three, four. Sabres, Sabres, Cavalry, Cavalry. Nothing. Okay. And then Tarleton is going against Lee. Uh, so Tarleton is at two, three, four. 
Infantry, cavalry, cavalry, infantry. Two infantry strikes. Take hit. Take hit, but he's not moved back. And he can battle back. Okay, which he'll do. A, oh, wait. Okay. Yeah, Lee will make Lee. And then this guy, <clears throat> he, I think he has to advance to make an additional battle. I'm not sure. Let me know down below if a cavalry unit has to advance to do an additional battle or they can go ahead and make a second attack, say, over here. I know they can't make an attack against Lee here, but uh, let's see. Lee, we got two rolls of two. And so Lee makes it. He survives it. Okay, then finally... I've got Webster and his regulars over here. Um, there's going to be a two plus a, uh, yeah, plus one is three die. Sabres, artillery, and artillery. Okay, the sabers work. And he can move into that position. And that is going to be it for the British move. Okay, Americans move, and again we get those three. I don't know if I like that rule. It seems a little bit... I don't know. It seems a little draconian. So, so basically, if the British don't take that or win the game... I mean, I think it's all over for the British here, but they would have to take those hills... And, which they're not, and I have played it where they pretty much sent the militia flying, but they don't seem to be getting the right uh, cards in this hand. Okay. Line command, that's what we want. We want the line command. Um, I will use that training. It only helps me with one, but that's okay. Get rid of all these screens here. Um, okay, line command. They have a pretty long line going clear across here. That's going to pretty much, I think, end the game. Um, let's see. He's going to attack. He's going to attack. Oh, he can skirmish. Oh, he can't do anything. Okay. Unless we want to use Washington alone, make him the whole line, which I don't. Um, but I can go ahead and uh, put attacker markers on all these guys. He can't really do anything. Okay, attacker marker here. He's part of the line, so I'll put him up here. Oh, he can't. No, he can't do anything. Uh, put him over here. Here. So Stevens, I'll move him with him and delete. He's got no line of sights there. Uh, he can see, so we will put a attacker marker here and then an attacker marker here. Uh, let's see. Nope, these guys are isolated. So training, um, somebody can move. Can anybody move? Um, hmm. I'm just going to fire at point, point, at point blank range into Tarleton there. I guess training didn't do anything. Nope. Okay. Discard it. I guess we didn't use that. Okay, let's see what happens here. So militia are going into, they're going to fight, fight into Webster there. They've got two, I think they go with two. Yep, they do have two. He's at full strength, so that's three die. Cavalry, infantry, and a flag. Okay, we can ignore the flag. They take a hit. And then Webster makes a saving throw. He makes it. Okay, then this militia, two, two, one. And 
That actually is a two flag and flag. Oh, okay. So two flags. So the guard gets a plus two to rally and they retreat two. One, two. So they have four uh, plus one for being at full strength. So that's five rally dice plus two is six, seven rally dice. Yeah, they did get their flag. I thought they would. Okay, and then we've got this guy. Now, with the guard being gone, he can't, doesn't have anybody to fire at. Militia can fire down at O'Hara. Uh, that's going to be three die. Flag, flag, cavalry. Okay. Um, he can ignore one flag, but he does have to take a flag. Okay, and then his rally is at four, five, six. And he makes it. Okay. These cannons firing directly at Tarleton. And again, I wish artillery was a little more powerful in this game. I think they ought to make it three and adjacent hexes or something, but okay. So the uh, he's got two dice at Tarleton and a flag, which is and an artillery. Neither of those do anything. Okay, then Stevens trying to hit Tarleton. So two, three, four die. Cavalry, sabers, flag, and sabers. Okay, the sabers don't do anything, but the flag is ignored. But the cavalry take a hit. And let's see how Tarleton does. He makes it. Okay, and then this militia fighting on Tarleton, three die. Saber, Saber's Cavalry. So Cavalry takes a hit again, and Tarleton tries to save and makes a save. If this would have been two Sabres, he would be gone. But Into turn. Okay, the British get to go. Inspired Leader right, which I don't have any. I got one guy on the right. I've got Scouts. I've got Advanced Left. I'm going to use reform, try to bring a guy back. Um, and I guess, uh, I could advance left here. I guess we'll advance left. I don't think there's much. I think the game, like I said, the game's pretty much over. Um, Advanced left says this three units. I'm going to move this guy and this guy. And we will do an attack. And then, oh, I've got to reform somebody. Um, I think I'm going to let my cannons reform. Roll one die, two dice with unit or adjacent to a leader. So two dice they can use. Okay, let's just roll our two die. Flag and infantry. Okay, the flag would count, and the unit symbol rallies one block. So I guess I get two hits. I mean, it doesn't matter. Now, I've always wondered on this. A flag or unit symbol rallies one block. Is that any unit symbol, or is that the unit symbol specific to the unit that you're trying to rally? For instance, do I need to get a... Would a cavalry symbol work here on rallying him, or do I need to get an artillery symbol? That's, I'm not quite sure how that works. I need to look at the rules specifically. Okay, these guys. Um, we'll start here with this light. And he's got a four. Plus five. Or he's got uh, two plus one is three die. Flag, cavalry, cavalry. Flags ignored. Okay, this guy is got uh, two die. Flag and flag, okay. Um, he can ignore one flag, but he has to move back the other one. And then he can attempt to rally for six. He rallies, okay. And this guy moves into position. And then right here, Webster will go um, two plus one is three die. Infantry, cavalry, cavalry. Infantry takes a hit, and that's it. And then 
I think that's game. Um, because basically you have that here and here. So that is pretty much it. I think the uh, Continentals won that one pretty easily. It wasn't even really much of a historical simulation. Um, I think what they were trying to do is get it so that the British would get up here and and get into a fight on this rear line, but they never did. So I don't know. I think if I were going to play this again, um, I would change this rule from Continental gains three temporary victory banners to two or even one for the hills. I guess you could leave it per hill just like the British did, but I, this seems a little draconian. I don't think it's going to be hard to get across the board, basically you got to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hexes, and you've got to do it in one, two, I mean three, four turns, one, two, three, yeah, four turns, so you've got to make eight hexes in four turns, and I just don't see well, you would have to use your... It's actually unwinnable because you would have to use your cavalry to do that. Unless you had some special cards that gave you extra movement. I just don't see how that's possible. So, again, I'd probably play that a little differently. Anyway, that's what I got. Uh, just in, in looking back on this, because of the way this is set up, I think it'd be fine with some variations, but I'm going to have to go with hold the line on this one. So... Anyway, that's what I got. I guess I'm done. That's all of the uh, all of the American Revolution battles I'm going to be doing for now. I've done the whole Southern Theater with these. Um, probably get away from the American Revolution for a while. I've been at it for two months almost. So it's kind of time to move on to maybe some Ancients and then maybe some World War II. Anyway, thanks for watching. I do really, really appreciate this. And I will talk to you later. Bye.